In this lesson, we're going to be going over the Forensic Toolkit. The Forensic Toolkit, or FTK, is a product from a company called Access Data that is similar to tools like ProDiscover or Encase. It gives you a graphical interface in order to explore evidence and be able to search more easily for different pieces of data or things that you're looking for. Now, one of the nice things about FTK is, and right here I've got a case that I have already opened with some evidence in it, and you can see down at the bottom I've got one file, which is a raw image, that actually has three different components to it. So I've got one partition that's called no name and another one called find me and another one that's just unpartitioned space, which is called unpart space. So one of the nice things about FTK, as I started to say a minute ago, is you can see up above here, there are different categories of information. Now, what I've got is a demo version. And so where it says total file items, and it says 5,000, I'm limited to 5,000 with this demo version of FTK. But that doesn't stop us from looking at pieces of information that I can find using this demo version. So I've got file categories over on the right-hand side, and right here I've got documents, and now I can take a look at each file and it shows me the contents up above. So it looks like there's a lot of XML documents and here's an HTML document and it actually renders it in the pane up in the upper right. And here's a text file. Looks like there's just a readme file that we managed to find here. So that's documents. And it looks like we found a database as well. And I don't actually have a viewer for that one. There's a lot of graphics files here. So you can see a lot of JPEGs and GIFs and just a lot of different graphics files here. So in the middle, it shows file status and we've got some duplicate items here. Looks like ones with bad extensions. So .fon is an extension that appears to be a bad extension. And here's one down towards the bottom that says .ms styles. And above that is .scr, which is actually a screensaver. So it's flagged a bunch of files with bad extensions, which may be worth looking at. So we could look at this font file, for example. It doesn't actually have a viewer for that. Let's take a look at the .scr file. We don't have a viewer for that one as well. Now there's a lot of executables. So any file that's executable shows up here. We've got some DLLs and some .exes. Now I could bring up file properties on that and you can see the file name as well as the file extension. And we've got some source information with the evidence path. So you can see all of the different file properties here. Now I can also go exploring, and this is where I can actually just look raw at the drive. I can pop open, for example, the log file. What I get up here is the strings from the log file. And now I've got the MFT open, and again, I'm getting strings out of the MFT. So what these are, the MFT is the master file table on an NTFS file system. So what I've got here is the master file table open and I can see that I've got the file name as well as it just says file zero. That's a portion of the data inside the MFT file. But you can see all of the different file names in the master file table. Now I've got the administrative user or the administrator user. And I can open up application data, Microsoft, and looks like there's not a lot of data there. Let's look into all users and just see what we get. I've got documents. I've got a little bit of data and I've got some, looks like this is a hidden operating system file here as well. 
So I've got a lot of different ways of looking at the information or the data that's stored on this particular hard drive. And again, I'm kind of limited here because I have only brought in 5,000 items. And so there may be a lot of data on this particular hard drive that's escaping our notice because it just wasn't pulled in because we didn't have a full working licensed copy in order to be able to look at all of the files on the system. One other thing that I get here is slack space or free space. And we've talked about this in other lessons where slack space or free space is the space after a file is done, but still there's space on the hard drive that's been allocated for it because the block is just too big for the amount of data that was supposed to be stored there for the file. So there's just empty space after the end of the file. And so we can look at all of this slack space or free space. And so it looks here like there is actually data in the slack space. Not a lot of it looks particularly useful in this particular case, but there are definitely places here where there is data in the Slack space or free space. So you could use this program to look at the Slack space and see whether it is being used to store data for different malicious purposes. You can see we've got graphics files here that we can look through. We can do a search. So I could do like a live search here of for porn, for example, and I could go looking for that and say I'm going to do all files and it's going to go looking through everything that we've got. So it's got 5,000 files. It's going to take a little while to go through all of them right now. It's going through the page file, but it looks like I've got two files with hits already. So I could actually just do a quit now and let's just see what we've got. So we did a query. And it looks like in the master file table, there's a couple of files. So there's one called child porn and one called child porn 01, and then another one just called porn 01. So it looks like there are actually pornography files that are stored on here. I could do another search for something like financial, for example. And let me add that. And now let's do a search for that and see if we get anything interesting or useful from there. And it looks like I've got seven hits from that one. So let's minimize this. And I've got seven hits. So it looks like there's a file called financialdata.xls, and I've got some hits in the page file, as it turns out. So. I can do searches on the actual hard drive, not necessarily the file system, but on the raw hard drive and just see where I turn up data. This is pretty useful to be able to easily store and categorize and search through a bunch of data. Now I could do a new case here just to show you how this works. And let's call this case two. And I'm going to leave the case path alone. I do need a case name, so new case. And I just want to show you all of the different questions that get asked. So I could store the agency and the company, the examiner's name, and all of the contact data associated with this particular case. Now, I've got a bunch of options here. So what events do I want to go in the case log? I've got error messages, bookmarking events, searching events, data carving, and case and evidence events. So I'm going to leave all of those checked. Processes to perform, I could do MD5 hash, a SHA-1 hash. I could do registry reports and data carving. And now I could just do some refining here. And I'm going to leave all of the defaults alone there. And I'm going to do the defaults there. And now I can add evidence. So this would be where I could select an acquired image of a drive, a local drive, contents of a folder, or an individual file. So you can see there's a lot of 
information that FTK actually stores, and it makes it easier as a forensic examiner to have all of your information stored in this one place. So you've got the data and you've got the history of what you've done. So you've got the ability to, to store bookmarks, for example, and you can do all sorts of searches and look for different categories of information. FTK just makes it really easy to be able to look through your forensic evidence in that way.